before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, Lord, I thank you for everything. I thank you for everything you do, and I thank you for everything you are. God, I ask that you just anoint me, Lord God, to see your word out the way you want it sent. Father God, that you'll anoint the congregation. Let them hear what you want them to hear, and let me offer your glory's sake in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. If he is my shepherd, that means I am his sheep. Right. Amen. And if we are his sheep, then we follow the shepherd. Yes. And then no matter where he may lead us, no matter where he may take us, we follow the shepherd. Yes. We gotta have full trust in the shepherd. Right. I, when I was a kid, I always wondered, why in the world are we always compared to sheep if he's always the shepherd? And he talks about being a shepherd of a flock, as a pastor over a flock. It's always mentioned in the Bible. And one reason is because that was a very big profession. There was a lot of shepherds to keep over the sheep because everyone seemed to own sheep in those times. But, you know, I also think of it like this. And you all are going to think I'm weird, but sheep are one of the stupidest animals there are. Sheep are dumb. They will follow the, the, the... Wherever you lead them, yeah. they do not fight. Right. And when they go in to get sheared, they just sit there and let them do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It, it's just, it's a true fact. Uh-huh. We are to be stupid like sheep <laughs> and follow Christ hey, no matter where he leads <laughs> without question. <laughs> In a sense, because we just stand there and we're like, huh? What? Yeah. You want me to go over here? Yeah. Why, Lord? Mm-hmm. Why would you want me to do that? Mm-hmm. I think the simple fact of the matter is, is we don't need to know why every time God tells us to do something. We don't need to know why every time God tells us to take a step. Mm-hmm. I, last year, around this time, I was going through a lot of problems in my mind. I was fighting a battle. Why, God, would you let me go through everything that I've been through? Why would I get married and then divorce? Why would, why would I have a child? And, and, and why, would, why would you let him go through all of this? What, everything just pumping through my mind. Things that, you know, I knew there was sin that, that, that just caused my divorce. And it, things that just shouldn't have happened. But then, I got angry with God. For no reason. Yeah. And I try to steer away from him. But my testimony is, is that the further I got from him, yeah. it got harder and harder and harder and harder. Yeah, life was pretty easy. I'm not going to lie. Things went pretty good while I wasn't in church. Things seemed like it was going all right. The, 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 the path seemed a little bit wider. Yeah. It seemed a little easier. I mean, there was a, I didn't worry about coming to church I, and on Sunday nights or Wednesdays. I come on Sunday mornings just to bring Joseph. But other than that, I couldn't care less. Uh-huh. Didn't know what I believed. Yep. Didn't even know if I really believed in God anymore. Mm-hmm. But I remember I went to church with Dad, and he preached and preached and preached. And man, my heart was in conviction. Yeah. <laughs> and then John Carter, Dad gave an all call. I didn't go. And John Carter got up and said, this could be your last chance. And I knew he was talking to me. From a mountaintop to the next mountaintop, and everything's mm-hmm. just going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I challenge you, if you can hop from one of these mountains over here, all the way over here, then you know what? You're Superman. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't do it. It's physically impossible. In your life, you have to walk down the mountain into the valley and back up another mountain.
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Touch me, Lord. There's a valley in every life, everybody's lives. Yes, Most of the time, there's more than one. All right. You can't just live on the mountaintop forever. No. Mm -hmm. You have to go through it. But here's another problem. We start going through the valley, then we want to set up camp. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I said, we go through the valley, and then we want to set up camp. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we set our camp up. Camp pretty temporary. Uh -huh. Well, I kind of like that out here. Mm -hmm. It's peaceful. Well, it bothers me. I might just build me a cat. <laughs> so we'll start building permanent structures in our valleys. Before you know it, we're so invested in the valley, yeah. we can't leave. Amen. Mm -hmm. We've let things come in our lives that we've built and built and built in that valley, expecting God just to be satisfied while we're in the valley, that we'll be satisfied while we're in the valley, uh -huh. but yet we'll see people walk by and they're climbing the mountaintops. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, why don't you bless me like that? Uh -huh. It's because yeah. you're not trudging through your valley. You're living in it. You want to live in it. Yeah. You like mm -hmm. living in it. Amen. Yeah. Hey I'm here to tell you, there's nothing good about the valley. No. There's no. nothing good about living in depression. There's no. nothing good about living in your financial woes. No. There's nothing good about living in marital problems. You have to take a step out of the valley. That's right. Amen. Start tearing down the wall. Yeah. Amen. Leave that cabin and let somebody else live in it and you go low. than what you have right now. Right. People may think you're crazy. Well, I don't see how God's blessing you. Jacob, how is the Lord blessing you? You've got a roommate. You don't, you don't really have a new car. You've got a big dent in the door. The odometer doesn't work. <laughs> Gas mileage is bad. How's the Lord blessing you? I am that I am. Yeah. He didn't just me. I am that I am. He right. made I am. Yeah. Whatever you need. Yeah. See, the Egyptian people had a God for everything. Yeah. They had a sun God, a water God, right. a harvest God. Yeah. They had a, a, a sowing God. They had everything that you could think of. Yeah. Josh made a joke the other day. He said they probably had a chair God. Right. next three clips you'll see my motivation crossroad dreamix and atm's appreciation night are nothing more or less than great my motivation like i got rid of my beard my mustache i was a whole bit like a whole new person <laughs> and i looked a mess i'm just gonna prep point blank i looked a hot mess like the year before I was fine but this year when I shaved I looked a mess and I was like I'm not doing that again
because I didn't get my hair cut first. That's why I looked a mess. I should have got my hair cut first. And then that shave. But A Team's appreciation now I look way better because my beard and stuff started going back. So but A Team's appreciation now was based on me ATM simply throwing saying that I've done everything that I did and I beat every single person that there was in AC and then Crossroads Remix like I did great like with Crossroads so I remixed it and added ATM and DJ Blazing and I was really surprised because I really didn't get as much as I thought I would but I guess it's weird because the video part of it was maybe copied same the same but just enjoy these next three clips having a clean shaved face with new glasses that's good but I'll tell you what's a good is motivation. Motivation is what gets you hyped up in the moment. Motivation it will motivation gets you to where you need to be. And on top of that, my motivation is my passion, my desires in life, and on top of that, serving my true and Lord Savior, Jesus, my God. Without Him, I wouldn't even be here. So on top of all this, to me it doesn't matter if I'm the mo I'm not the most athletic guy. I'm not the most coordinated guy. I'm not the most smartest or hottest. But I am one of the best, one of the greatest. The young guns in the nation today and let me tell you something it doesn't matter what the devil tries to do or what he tries to bring because I'm always going to be ready for him no matter what so devil you can go on you've tried your best to knock me down so many times but guess what? I'm still here and I'm not going anywhere, devil. And like I said a couple of weeks before in my interview, yes, it is my time to shine. It's my time to rise up because I am one of the future leaders here in the world, in this generation. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When it comes down to it, I'm simply blazing. Now, I've said uh, all, the, all the times of the world, it is, I have to have a championship, and I will become a champion. It doesn't matter if it's 10 years or 20 years down the road, whatever. I still will claim victory, and my Miss Amazing will be right beside me one day. You can rest assured of that. But for right now, as long as God is on my side, as long as I'm serving Him, then that's all that matters. And as far as my music concerns, my music, my videos, I appreciate you, nation, watching them. And I appreciate you backing me up as far as Blazing Entertainment and Q Radio 97.5 concerns. And I thank you all. My music and will make an impact. I may never get uh, one of the best albums. I may never get a, a real album. But at least you nation will be surprised at what I can do as far as rapping and videos are concerned. I hope that one day that I do make it to the big stage. And I hope that one day I can become a big star. But as long as God is on my side 
and I'm serving him and I'm doing the best I can for him doing his will that's all that matters and I guarantee you my motivation will take me to new paths to new heights because I'm Huncher Blazing ATM and I'm simply blazing.